Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the isoniazid. What is isoniazid? Isoniazid is one of the narrow spectrum antibiotic and this drug is particularly used in the treatment of mycobacterial infections. But within the mycobacteria, it is not useful for all types of mycobacterial infections. This drug is specifically used in the mycobacterium tuberculosis. But this drug is not useful in the treatment of mycobacterium leprae, which is going to produce a leprosy. So only in the tuberculosis, this isoniazid is useful. That's why it is called as narrow spectrum antibiotic. So today in this video, let us discuss how this isoniazid acts as a narrow spectrum antibiotic and how it can act in the mycobacterial tuberculosis infection. What are the side effects, drug interactions, contraindications and clinical use of this drug. Now how this isoniazid acts in the mycobacterium tuberculosis. So this drug can act as a bacteriostatic. It can inhibit the growth of the mycobacteria. Otherwise it can also act as bactericidal. It can also kill the mycobacteria. Thereby it can produce a cidal activity. So the action of this isoniazid whether it's a bacteriostatic or bactericidal depends on the type of cells on which this drug is going to act. It shows the bacteriostatic action on the slowly growing mycobacterial cells. On the other hand, bactericidal action is observed on the fast growing mycobacterial cells. What is the structure of isoniazid? Isoniazid is having simple structure like this and here you can observe it is a derivative of the isonicotinic acid. In the isonicotinic acid, the OH group of the carboxylic acid is replaced by one of this group. What is this group? This group is the hydrazine. So here it is ending with the zine, Z-I-N-E. And when this hydrazine group is going to be attached with the carbonyl group, then it becomes a hydrazide. So isoniazid is a isonicotinic hydrazide. So it is a derived from the isonicotinic acid and it is in the functional group is the hydrazide. So hydrazide is the combination of carbonyl group along with the hydrazine. So what are the functional group in the isoniazid is the hydrazide, which is derived from the isonicotinic acid. So it is called as isonicotinic hydrazide. And even what are the ring system here is the pyridine and here this pyridine is attached with the carbohydrazide at the fourth position. So we can also write the IUPAC name of isoniazid as pyridine for carbohydrazide. In this way isoniazid is having the hydrazide group on the fourth position of the pyridine ring system. Now let us see how this isoniazid acts. Within the mycobacterial cells. One of the important step is the cell wall synthesis where the mycolic acid is going to be synthesized within the mycobacteria. Among this, one of the important step is the conversion of the trans 2 enoyl ACP. So here ACP is the acyl carrier protein. Now this trans 2 enoyl is going to be converted into another intermediate that is the acyl ACP. Acyl group is attached to the acyl carrier protein. And this step is going to be mediated by one of the enzyme INHA which is coded by the gene INHE. In this way, trans enoyl ACP is converted to acyl ACP and then this acyl ACP can further undergo so many steps such that it is going to release the mycolic acid molecule. Now this mycolic acid can be transported outside the membrane where they can protect the membrane and form the cell wall of the mycobacteria. In this way, mycolic acid is going to be present in the cell wall of mycobacteria which is responsible for the cell wall rigidity as well as protecting the cellular functions of the mycobacterium tuberculosis. Now let us see how this isoniazid acts. Isoniazid acts as a prodrug. These isoniazid molecules can enter into the mycobacterial cell. So let us indicate them with the letter INH. So INH is the isoniazid. So this INH is derived from one of the term isonicotinyl hydrazide, which is commonly known as INH. Now this is a prodrug and it is going to be oxidized by one of the enzyme catalase peroxidase enzyme which is coded by one of the gene cat g now this isoniaz now this isoniazid can be converted into isonicotinyl radical ion which is commonly known as inh plus in presence of the hydrogen peroxide now once it is going to be ionized it can interact with the nad and this nad in the reduced form can interact with the isoniazid radical ion such that they are going to form a adduct called as INHNAD. So this adduct which is formed from the isoniazid as well as NADH molecules is now highly active and responsible for the action of uh, isoniazid. Now they can 
inhibit the enzymatic activity of the INHA, thereby they are going to inhibit the conversion of the trans-enoyl-CoA into the acyl ACP. By inhibiting these steps, now this adduct can inhibit the sense of mycolic acid so that mycolic acid is not synthesized, thereby cell wall is not going to be synthesized. And when the cell wall is deficient in the mycolic acid, cell constants can be leaked out of the membrane which reduce the rigidity of the membrane resulting in the bactericidal activity in the mycobacterium. In this way isoniazid can be converted to an active metabolite which inhibits the mycolic acid synthesis. So this is the structure of the isoniazid and here this isoniazid can interact with the catalase peroxidase enzyme in presence of hydrogen peroxide such that it is undergoing the ionization and it is going to form a radical. Now this radical is nothing but the isonicotinoyl radical. This radical is highly reactive and it can interact with the NADH molecules. So when NADH can interact with this, they can this isonicotinoyl radical can, in, can attack at this position such that they are going to form an addition product which is uh, denoted as INHNAD. Now this adduct is highly reactive and it can inhibit the activity of the enzymes coded with the INHA. In this way, isoniazid can inhibit the mycolic acid synthesis but here the two important genes which are responsible for the action of the isoniazid are one is the CATG which is coding for the catalase peroxidase and another gene is the INHA which is coding for the enzymes responsible for the mycolic acid synthesis. That's why few of the mycobacterial cells can get the resistance towards isoniazid by mutation of any of these genes like CATG or INHA. What are the side effects? Isoniazid mainly produces two important side effects. The first one is the peripheral neuropathy. When this drug is given, it can produce few of the side effects like numbness in the patient, numbness, tingling, as well as burning sensation in the both hands as well as feet in the patients. And these side effects are further increased in the patients who are having the deficiency of vitamin B6. That's why, in order to control this peripheral neuropathy, pyridoxine supplements can be given in order to control the symptoms. And other factors like the pyridoxine deficiency because of any malnutrition or any other conditions like the diabetes or chronic alcoholism, all these conditions can further increase the peripheral neuropathy that is produced by isoniazid. And second important side effect is the hepatotoxicity. Whenever this isoniazid is given for the treatment of tuberculosis, it can increase the hepatic enzymes, it can elevate the SGPT as well as SGOT levels and it can also increase the bilirubin levels within the urine as well as plasma and apart from it can also produce few of the side effects which are resembling the hepatotoxicity like uh, anorexia loss of appetite can be observed some nausea and vomiting can be observed in the patients and fatigue malice all this can be observed with the uh, hepatotoxicity induced by isoniazid so whenever this isoniazid is given for a longer period the hepatic function should be checked thoroughly in order to assess any development of hepatic impairment and isoniazid can also produce uh, other hemodynamic changes like the granulocytosis, aplastic anemia, thrombocytopenia lack, a decreased platelet count can also be observed. And apart from this, it can also produce few of the hypersensitive reactions like the skin eruptions. And toxic epidermal necrolysis is also observed with the isoniazid. Similarly, it can also produce few of the other inflammatory conditions like the arthritis as well as vasculitis. So these are the various side effects of isoniazid, but among them, Peripheral neuropathy and hepatotoxicity are more important and they should be thoroughly checked when this drug is used for a longer period. Metabolism. Isoniazid can undergo the metabolism by various ways and one of the important route is the acetylation of the isoniazid to produce the N-acetyl isoniazid. So N-acetylation is one of the important pathway but this acetylation capacity is different from patient to patient. Few of the people can act, few of the patients can act as slow acetylators and few of the people can act as fast acetylators. So in case of the patients who are acting like slow acetylators, they will have the less metabolism of the isoniazid which increase the levels of the isoniazid within the plasma which results in the toxicity of the isoniazid. So the dose of the isoniazid can be individualized based on the patient conditions. So in the slow acetylators, the low dose should be given but in the fast acetylators, the dose can be increased. So what are the contraindications? The first contraindication is the hypersensitivity and second one is the hepatotoxicity. So if any of these two conditions are observed in the patients, this drug should be avoided. Drug interactions. Normally tyramine containing food are going to be converted to metabolites by the MAO enzyme. Particularly MAO B enzyme is responsible for the metabolism. 
but here this isoniazid can have some inhibitory activity on this MAO enzyme thereby it can inhibit the metabolism of the tyramine and when the tyramine is not metabolized the tyramine levels are going to be increased within the plasma which produce the hypertensive crisis a sudden increase in the blood pressure can be observed so this type of reaction is called as cheese reaction which is commonly observed with the MAO inhibitors but this cheese reaction can also be observed with the isoniazid similar isoniazid can affect the plasma levels of so many types of drugs it can inhibit the levels of the ketoconazole ketoconazole is one of antifungal agent but it can increase the levels of many of the drugs like phenytoin carbamazepine valproate as well as theophylline so whenever these drugs are given along with the isoniazid the plasma levels of these drugs can be increased resulting in their toxicity so the dose should be adjusted thoroughly in order to prevent their toxic reactions and similarly isoniazid can also increase the hepatotoxicity that can be produced by estaminophen because estaminophen produce hepatotoxicity as well as isoniazid can also produce the hepatotoxicity how it is given this drug is available as tablet form at different doses like 100 mg as well as 300 mg but the dose of the drug depends on the patient condition it can be given initially at the 5 mg per kg in the adult patients and dose can be given up to 300 mg per day and sometimes the dose can also be increased at 15 mg per kg and the maximum dose that can be achieved is the 900 mg per day in this way the dose can be individualized based on the patient condition so that's about the isoniazid isoniazid is a narrow spectrum antibiotic which can act as both bactericidal as well as bacteriostatic but this drug is highly selective for the mycobacterium tuberculosis so it is mainly used in the treatment of tuberculosis that may be associated with other infections like the HIV and this drug inhibits the mycolic acid synthesis within the mycobacteria which thereby it inhibits the cell wall synthesis this drug can also get the resistance by mutation of the two important genes CAD-G as well as INHA and two important side effects of isoniazid is the peripheral neuropathy and hepatotoxicity and the plasma levels of isoniazid may be variable in the from the patient to patient because slow acetylators will have less metabolism thereby they show more toxicity with the accumulation of the isoniazid so that's about this antimycobacterial agent hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel share this video with your friends post your comments in the comment box thank you for watching this video